Log number three. Crank is life. If there's one thing I miss more in the world, it's the stellar and often bizarre world of Crank. Even more so than vanilla flavoured Monster Munch, and that's saying something. When that sickly sweet artificial flavouring was dropped in the past tense like a fart at a party, it was like my whole world stopped turning. And that feeling happened again last year in May, when the greatest band you've never heard of called it quits in a cafe in Bangor. Never heard from, again. Damn man, that's how you do it. Make a stark impression to everyone you play to in the underground, and then fuck off before the wider world takes notice. Mad Spanner shared the stage with Crank twice, and both times they played, they had made a lasting impact. The first time I saw them, they played to the other two bands, a loop artist, who was double looked, and maybe three or four others that wandered in, randomly. The venue was absolutely dead, but that didn't stop Crank introducing us into their world. Those squeaking rubber chickens, you know the ones, the ones that were once memed, they were chucked into the meagre crowd, which popped and honked throughout their whole entire set. It almost undermined everything on stage. Even when the giant frontman screamed in catharsis that his weak old baby was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen, and that she has tubes all over her face, and it was reciprocated with the rabid honking of novelty chickens. I had witnessed the absurd, and it was glorious. The second time we shared the stage was to a packed out Metal to the Masses finals in Wrexham, just as things opened up a bit from lockdown. The frontman smashed an acoustic guitar to pieces over the back of one of his backing dancers, who was wearing a giant housefly mask of course, and had an on-stage scuffle mid-song. The dancer's hand was split open bleeding and left the stage mirroring the flip bird from the singer, who then proceeded to sit down, rip open his shirt and then eat the bloodied pieces between lyrics. I had again witnessed the absurd on stage, and it was glorious. The scrapping pair were all cushy afterward, to make me wonder if it was all an act, and I'm breaking their uh, sort of cave age, but what a show it was. Oh yeah, sure, they're not everyone's cup of tea in the audience. Where's the professionalism? There's no way they're getting through. Fucking hell, what happened to authenticity? The unpredictability? Or the danger? Fuck em. Crank always played within their own world, and as far as the audience was concerned, you could either like it or lump it. Those bloody chickens were going to get honked anyway. They were a true as hell punk band playing to metalheads, and I wish the punks I know got to see them in their wholly fresh idiosyncratic take on music, and their humour was unique and totally their own too. And that's not to take away from the existentialist and Orwellian themes peppered all the way through their only album, Down and Out in Blen Iron Port. They had that perfect mix of having something to say, but not caring if anyone was paying attention. The production is serviceable, but even with the peaking microphone, it added authenticity to the sound without making anything unlistenable. It's raw, unique, and wildly themselves, and I dare anyone to listen to the likes of Reptile Man and Divide and Rule and disagree that they are absolute downright bangers. Ho, ho, fucking ho! It's Christmas! It's Christmas! Let's fill the ocean with plastic! It's Christmas! I've seen many comedic bands, sure, but Crank was so much more than that. They effortlessly put their absurd on stage, and they did it far more effectively than Mad Spanner ever have. Maybe things weren't quite right after that sh particular show. Maybe life got in the way and they went their own separate ways as priorities shifted, like my ex-bandmates did. Maybe one of them was about to get hashtag me too as a sheep nonce by the local farmer's market. It doesn't matter. They left an impact I'm supremely jealous of. They were the best band to ever come out of Wales, and no one knew it but the relative few. <laughs>